Right, story time. We're having a break this week from doing a lot on cars, so we're going to tell a story. And we're going to tell a story all about... Well, let's start off. What has this car here, da, 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 the new Defender, got in common with our little baby off-roader here? Well, could this be the new challenger for the Defender? Obviously, we're only joking, but we're going to do a little video about Ineos. When we first had the new Defender, a lot of people have got issues with the new Defender. And they're like, it's not really a real Defender, is it? A farmer's not going to use it. And they have got some valid points. Obviously, that is a very complicated beast, which makes it really easy for numpties like me to drive off-road with no skill or experience, which is good for me. But if you're a real hardened off-roader, or if this is out of your budget, then the old Defender had certain attractions. It was, it had a frame chassis, it had solid axles, there was no electronics involved in the suspension at all. And as we know, that one's got multiple ECUs and we've had fun with the software. Now, I think it's a bit like when you, when a pet dies and you replace the pet, it, you can never really compare the old cat to the new cat. It's, you can't do it, they're different. And you can't ever get the old cat back again. Well, when they announced that the old Defender was stopping production, Jim Ratcliffe, who is a billionaire, entrepreneur, British, um, industrialist, um, he thought, that's a shame because there's still a market. And it's true, there is still people that would buy a brand new old classic Defender. And if you look at some of the prices of the old Defenders, they are going for strong money. So clearly there is a desire to have them, but they're obviously expensive to produce. Legislation is difficult with emissions, pedestrian safety and all that stuff. So obviously Land Rover couldn't produce them. But Jim Ratcliffe, he wanted to buy all the tooling and the rights. Now, a lot of the stuff I'm going to say here is what I've read on the internet. So I'm going to put a disclaimer, it, allegedly. And Land Rover refused to sell him. So he said, well, that's fine. Well, what if I can't make the old Defender, I'll make a vehicle that fills the void left when the classic Defender stopped producing. So he has gone about and he has designed the Ineos Grenadier, which is named after a pub in Belgravia, apparently. And he wanted a, a robust, rugged, utilitarian, Defender-esque vehicle. So he's gone about doing that. So we're going to go and explain a little bit about what we know. Right, well, we're stood out here in the cold. Let's finish this little link up and then we can get back into the office. So originally he, he wanted to buy the tool in. That never happened. So then he's gone off to design his own and he said, well, what we're going to do is we're going to build this in Bridge End in Wales. Now, Bridge End in Wales is a very special place for me in my life. George, my son's video, and he's going, what's special about Bridge End? After university, I went to work at the Sony factory in Bridge End. So I spent a couple of years of my life um, working in a manufacturing, as a manufacturing engineer in Bridge End. So I thought, oh, that's cool for Bridge End. They, they could do with it. They, they need the industry. Sony, unfortunately, their TV plant closed. They still got another plant there. He said he's going to build that, and that was good. And they started to set the site up. And I think the WDA sort of invested some money in infrastructure to make a nice site available for them. But then recently, well, December, yeah, this month, uh, these confirmed that he is now bought or done a deal to buy or use the smart car manufacturing facility in France. It's actually a town called Smartville. Well, it's not. Well, it is. But there is a town there called that they have named Smartville where they make the smart. And they're currently making the electric smart car there. But they've done a deal. And I think Jim Ratcliffe is going to, and Ineos, they're going to run the factory to produce the smart cars. And alongside that, they are going to produce the new Ineos Grenadier in, in time to come. So that's where we are at. Right, let's go inside and continue the story. Right, we're back in the wall and we are with our trusty old real Defender. So I, I love the old Defender, I love the new Defender. I'm sure I will love the Ineos Grenadier when it comes out. But right, we were just on the subject of geography. So we, in our travel, we started in Belgravia, London, and then we'd gone down to Bridge End. And apparently that was around September 2019 when they announced they were going to build the car in Bridge End. They're actually going to build, at the same time they announced they were going to build the the chassis, the ladder chassis in Portugal. So it was going to be a sort of European collaboration. Now, apparently old Jim, Jimbo, he was a bit of a Brexiteer. So he's a big supportive of Brexit, which seems a little strange when you've got, 
Why is it strange or ironic? I don't know. But when you've got a European, you're going to have Portugal and Wales, and now we've got France coming. But we're having a little chat, and we're doing our geography, and so I got the map up. And so we've got Bridge N, and then if you go to, um, to the town of Hambach in France, it sounds German. It's actually on the French-German border. This is where Smartville is here. You've got, there's about 600 miles to here. But then if you look where the new Defender is made, uh, the white one we showed outside, it's made in Slovakia in a town called, but apparently I'll pronounce it wrong every time I say it, in Nitra, I think it's pronounced here. So you can see, as is interesting, when the new, if they come by road to the UK, the new Defenders are gonna go straight past the old Smartville on their way to Calais and over, but there we go. So actually, interestingly, also in, um, in August this year, there was a court ruling, Land Rover took Jim Ratcliffe to court, or Ineos, I'm sure they didn't take Jim to court, and said, look, this, um, this new Ineos Grenadier you're making, it looks a bit like the Defender, and um, we think you're infringing our sort of intellectual property in, in as much as the shape. But Land Rover lost that battle, and I think the court ruling went something along the lines of, it's a fairly generic sort of shape. And if you look at early Land Cruisers to a lot of generic G-Wagons, they've got that boxy four by four shape. And you know, some would argue that their shape is driven not so much by design aesthetics, but just by function. You've just got a ladder chassis, you've got four seats and an engine, bam, you need big wheel clearances and room for articulation axle articulation and it's kind of the sort of shape you end you're not worried about aerodynamics you're not this is never going to be something that someone's going to buy for economy so jim's now gone off he's bought the done the deal with the factory in france um, and he's now all set to make it now to be fair to him he is throwing money at this thing left right and center he has got a company in austria magna doing the suspension setup they're doing fierce testing. I'll put some pictures on the screen. And if you look in the back of that Defender on the screen, for something that was supposed to be a, a simple utilitarian Defender, you can see that in testing, obviously that's not going to be all that in production, but in testing, it looks like something out back to the future. It looks like the back of the DeLorean. But there we go. Just trying to get a DeLorean into the video somewhere or other. Right, so where does that leave us now? So all this is happening, it's all dead exciting. They're doing loads of testing, they're doing some low key adverts. And I've signed up on the, on the waiting list for an Ineos because I, I seem to have an uncanny habit of finding the faults when I buy new cars. So I, I've signed up, but they haven't let me order one or do anything yet, but I keep getting emails. And the latest email is quite interesting. They, they said, oh, coloring competition, design, design the whatever you want. The, the, the colours, the graphics for, for an Ineos Defender. So I thought, oh, that sounds good. So George and I thought we've got a bit of time over Christmas. We'll, uh, and, they, and they give you a 2D file to download. So I'll put some screenshots up now of the competition entry email I got. And, and then there's a little link there and you click on the link and you can download the files. And I'll put up a little screenshot of the files. There's a 2D image and a 3D image. So I thought, flipping brilliant. So we got sketching away, didn't we? I'll flip up my laptop now and you can have a look at my, my idea of one. Right, so here you go. So this is, this is mine. So I thought I'll have it grey. And the Ineos has got this little triangle bit. So uh, I thought, well, I'll have that on the door and I'll have this like red line going around. And it looks a bit sort of mountainous. I thought that'll look good. And they got these funky round rear lights on the back. So I'll have the line. And they've got a red sort of thing on the back door so I thought I'll have the line going all the way around and I thought well, I'll slap a red roof on the top I bet it and then I noticed their roof has got like this big cross shape so I thought oh, that looks all good we've almost got like a flag thing going on there and I'll have a bit of red oh, I was quite happy with that so then it says it says well make sure you've read the terms and conditions well, well better check on this so when you also said get get a child to help so George has had a go as well we won't have you got yours you've got one to show yet George or is this no, no it's still a work in progress he had it all flash up on the computer with Paint Shop Pro and everything. But then we, we had to go, we had to go, hold on a minute, Job. You're going to have to stop because, right, here you go. So I'll put it up on the screen now. So, well, first of all, we went to the website for the, and then there's two sets of terms and conditions. So the first set are the terms and conditions for using the website. It's a bit weird just for using a website, but I thought let's have a little dip in and have a look. What's, what's the, 
I think they put the wrong terms and conditions up because it seems to be a very long legal document that they're supposed to have with their suppliers on a supplier agreement about confidentiality and, and if you make parts that break, you're responsible for the recall costs and everything. But it makes insightful reading if you're into sort of contract negotiation, but seemed a little harsh for using a website. But we glossed over that, didn't we, George? We thought, uh, Claire, let's hope they're good at building cars and maybe websites are not their thing. So we, we dived into the um, terms and conditions for the... I mean, in fact, let me pull it up on the laptop now. We'll have a little story time. Right, so we've got here, so we've got the Grenadier competition rules, but rather than read it off my laptop, I can put it up on the screen for you to view as we talk through it. So this is the Grenadier livery competition, and it's the competition. I love it when they do that. They repeat it, but it makes it more legal, apparently, and you put it in brackets, and it says, it's open to anyone 18 or over. So, George, you've wasted your time, mate. That's you out. So I don't know why it was asking you to get the children involved in the invitation email, but there we go. And it's very specific. They've got to be 18 all over on the 15th of December, 2020. Now, it does actually further down, go on to say, I think it's midnight as well, and even states GMT, but there we go. Anyway, so to enter the competition, we must have informed them that we wanted to receive English language communications. Now, I think I did tick a box somewhere that I wanted to receive updates because I wanted to to find out about getting one of these in the office because I, I think it could be quite cool. And then uh, did we receive the email yet? Yeah, we received an email with those competition guidelines. So that's good. And then it says there's no prize or gift associated with the competition. Now, to be clear, I haven't told you, you're all like trying to download it and I'll put some, I don't know if I can put links to it, but what have you got to do? So you're all excited, you're all there, but you want to know what the prize is. So the prize is you can get to meet one of the designers either virtually or in person this is all described at the end um, but you will also see one of the cars that will be wrapped in the livery to match your design so that could be quite fun no cash no wonga no moolah no free ineos but that's that's okay it's not all about the money is it right then entries for the competition must create their own design fairly obvious right and it says uh, to email their design to the competition email and it says you won't be accepted by any other means so this is all looking like fairly standard sort of rules yeah so as you can see it then goes on to say there's only one entry allowed per person and it goes on about the scoring criteria 50 percent based on a bit visually appealing and also 50 percent on it being practical to make so that that makes sense because they've got to get the wrap design they've got to get it and then it goes on to intellectual property. All competition entries, including the design and accompanying materials submitted to Ineos, to Ineos will become the property of Ineos uh, upon receipt. So when they get them, that's then their property. They, they own the design we've sent to them and they'll not be returned, which is a bit weird because they've all got to be submitted by email. So I don't quite know how they would return something you've sent by email. But I guess we know what they're trying to say. Right, so you're wondering where I'm all heading now, but it all starts to get a bit juicy at point number 10. And it says, by entering the competition and submitting a design, you represent and warrant to Ineos that the competition entry and your design, including the use of the design by Ineos, shall not infringe any third party intellectual property. You hereby agree to indemnify and hold harmless Ineos from and against any and all claims, damages, losses, penalties, costs and expenses incurred by Enios arising from or in any connection with any breach of the foregoing warranty. So what this means is if accidentally you happen to design a livery that was based on a Land Rover County Limited Edition li livery that was somehow stuck in your mind and you thought that might like look quite good, if you submit that to Ineos and they then wrap the trucks and then make posters everywhere and then they get sued by Land Rover or anyone else where you've inadvertently used some design that could be attributed to them, then you're responsible. Which sounds, and not just a little bit, for all losses, all their costs and indemnify them. That seems pretty harsh for a competition entry for me. So that seems a bit harsh to me. So if you were thinking of entering, I don't want to put you off. Enter, have some fun, get the thing done. But I'd be wary not to uh, infringe any intellectual property. 
back when we used to do Blue Peter colouring competitions, and I don't think the lawyers got involved this much. So, right, anyway, where are we going? So we've digressed now into the... And he also doing some brilliant testing. There's some great videos up of their car, and I'm sure it's going to be very promising. But I guess it just concerns me a little bit that even a simple competition seems to have been overcomplicated and over legalified is that even a word no but there we go so let's watch Ineos let's keep an eye on them I mean it could be really really exciting and as we all know competition is good right where there is competition where different car makers are offering different solutions to people's problems and people's needs that's good so don't get I'm I'm, I'm down on the list to get an Ineos Grenadier and I'm excited to see what comes but I guess I just wanted to alert people to the rules and sometimes you do need to read the rules and regulations when entering competitions but there we go slightly different video let me know what you think